and we are live. Okay, so good evening, everyone. Good evening. Magandang magandang gabi po kayo, Panginoon. Amen. Magandang gabi po sa bawat sa po sa atin. We praise and thank God for tonight, and uh, good to see our folks here inside the church. Amen. And welcome to Bergen Bible Baptist Church in our prayer meeting. This is our first uh, prayer meeting for the month of October. So, and then we are glad that we're still here, we are still alive, awake, <laughs> enthusiastic for God's glory. Amen. So, um, let's start our prayer meeting with some singing. And let's sing our first song. Glory to his name, glory to his name, hymn 63, glory to his name. All right, so let's sing on the first now. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down here for cleansing for sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied, glory to his name. so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. On the third, come to this fountain so rich and sweet. As thy poor soul at the Savior's feet, plunge into day and be made complete. Glory to his name. name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Amen. Glory to his name. So let's sing another song. May I request our audience here to please stand as we sing at Calvary 155. After this song, I'd like to request Brother Bobby to open us in the word of at Calvary, on the first, same. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing that it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. By God's word at last my sin I learned. Then I tremble at the low I spurn. Till my guilty soul imploring turned to Calvary. Multiplied to me, there my burden so found liberty at Calvary. On the last now, oh, the love that through salvation's plan, oh, the grace that brought it down to man, oh, the mighty gulf that God did spend at Calvary. Great and grace was free. Pardon, there 
was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, once again, we thank you for your grace and faithfulness into our lives. Thank you, O God, for your protection for uh, the whole um, Monday to uh, uh, until today since the last time we, we, we met, Lord, last Sunday. And Lord, uh, please uh, bless our prayer meeting, prayer fellowship tonight. Lord, thank you for the privilege of prayer, uh, humbling ourselves before your throne of grace every Wednesday night. Help us, Lord, to just enjoy the fellowship, especially the preaching of your holy word, that once again your word will challenge us and it will enable us once again to uh, uh, see you as the word of life, the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, we commit unto you, Lord, a special number. We uh, also commit to you your servant, Brother Robert, who will be preaching tonight. Lord, be with us. Guide us uh, with your Holy Spirit, Lord, as we desire to be blessed and to enjoy your presence in our midst tonight. Lord, as a congregation, bless our prayer time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Bobby, for that prayer. You may now be seated. And we praise and thank God for these songs that we can sing for God's glory. Amen. It's a spiritual songs. And we have uh, a lot of messages on it. And we praise and thank God for these beautiful songs. Okay, so let's sing another song. Does Jesus care? And we know that the answer to that question is God cares for us. Amen. Jesus cares for us. On the first now. Does Jesus care when my heart is pain? deeply for birth or song as the burdens press and the cares distress and the weight grows weary and long oh yes he cares I know he cares Savior cares on the second does Jesus care when I've tried and failed to receive some temptation strong when for my deep grief there is no relief though my tears Does Jesus care when I've said goodbye to the dearest on earth to me? And my sad heart aches till it nearly breaks. Is it all to with my 
that we have some troubles in life the Lord is there to care for us and is always present in our troubles amen so thank you very much for our musicians for tonight sister Rochelle and pastor Sam for playing the instruments and thank you for singing uh, uh, tonight for God's glory amen so this time we are going to have our praises and prayer request okay so let's start with uh, praises first uh, update for Pastor Cesar Hernandez uh, my dad is much better than the previous um, days he's still in the in, still in the hospital but he's out of danger now still weak but his oxygen and BP is now stable uh, they are still giving antibiotics for the treatment of his pneumonia one more thing no need for another session of hemoperfusion. Um, extend our sincere gratitude to all our brethren for all their prayers. Sister Eileen Gay Bareng, daughter of Pastor Caesar. Okay, we present thank God for that update and we are to continue praying for uh, Pastor Caesar. Amen. So thank you, Po. And another. Um, Thanksgiving or praises here uh, from Sister Jenna May Nakarbatong. Um, Thanksgiving, thank you, Church, for praying for my mom and my family back in the Philippines. Mom is off uh, IV now, and my dad is doing pretty good as well. They are, they all just need rest now. We really appreciate the prayers. Thank you, Church. Amen. So answered prayer, we praise and thank God for that, for healing mercy. And uh, hopefully that they will um, uh, recover uh, soon, uh, fully recovered. And let's pray for, for them. And we praise and thank God for that update also from Sister Jenna May. Okay, so another praise is here. A safe travel of Pastor Abel from the Philippines. Okay, amen. He's uh, well, amen. Uh, energetic okay medyo inantok na yan jet lag pa pero we praise and thank God for his presence tonight of his presence tonight okay so and for the safe travel also safe travel of Pastor Sam and company from Tennessee and Ohio okay we praise and thank God for your prayers also for them they uh, made it safe by God's grace amen so and also um they enjoyed the travel, okay, and they had a wonderful time with uh, some of the friends and also Pastor Geiler, I believe, and the uh, MBCs, okay. So, um, let's greet our birthdays for this um, week. We have a lot, amen. So, happy, happy birthday to Brother Timothy on Sunday, October 10. And happy birthday also to Brother Roberto Guzman, October 12. And Sister Tricia Guzman, October 13. Uh, Brother Harley Minano on October 14. Uh, Brother James Minano on October 14. So, mga birthday. No? And Sister Amanda Cumia, October 15. And Brother Alain Batong on October 17. So happy, happy birthday to our friend, uh, to our brethren, and may the Lord continue to bless you and um, bless you with many more years to come. Amen. So we praise and thank God for your life. Okay. So these are the prayer requests for tonight. So um, let's pray. Uh, request from Sister Cecil. Simbengo, thank you, Church, for the love and prayers and comfort that you have given for the bereaved family of Brother Henry, uh, for the passing away of Juanito Simbengo, his cousin who lost his battle to COVID. 
He is not. He is only 41 years old, and he is married to Chari for only three years. God is good, for He alone gives great comfort when our hearts are broken. So let's uh, pray for comfort and strength to the family. Okay, of um, Bonito Sambengo, okay, and also our brother Henry's. Relatives, okay. So let's pray for them, and also comfort and strength to Sister Gloria Sabila and family. Her dad, Tata, in the Philippines, went home to be with the Lord. Okay, so uh, another um, uh, request here. So let's continue to pray for them, uh, for comfort and strength to the Sabila family. And on behalf of the church, we are extending our uh, condolences to the family. And The Lord will give you the strength at this time of grief. Okay, so let's also pray for safe travel of Nanay Con Constancia Gamutin from the Philippines back to NJ on October 11. So let's pray for safe travel and also um, NCLEX review of Sister Kim Manano and Sister Hazel Manalo. Dusty Paklev for immigrant visa. And we are Um, here the things or regulars that we have okay, the names are there let's continue to pray for Tatay Alfredo Yambot Evangelist Serb and Mrs. Marge Braille and Sister Luming Tolentino Sister Naomi Orobistondo, Sister Emia Bildan uh, Sister Marianne Rebilla, Edward K Maria Sembengo, Dr. Myron and Mrs. Glider Sister Shirley Rowalt Brother June Herrera, okay, and also uh, let's pray for this and uh, this coming uh, upcoming event of our church this Sunday. Let's pray for our pastors' appreciation uh, October 10 and all the pastors. Uh, we appreciate all of the pastors, amen, around the world, amen. Thank you for your labor of love to uh, the ministry of Christ and also um, mission conference. On October 31 to uh, 29 to 31, so let's pray for this um, event in our church, and also conflict in Middle East and peace in Israel. God's protection to everyone from COVID. Um, pastoral staff, deacons, um, church leaders, members, and their families, and saved loved ones, families, and friends. Let's also include all the missionaries. Uh, we have pastors and spiritual frontliners that we know. And also, let's pray for our uh, frontliners here in our church and their families. Okay, so is there any more? Okay, from Sister Joanne Batong. Uh, thanks for praying with us. My cousin's husband, Mart, uh, California, is now home with oxygen. My brother-in-law. Pedring in Baguio is also getting better. Might be going home on Friday. Praise God. Amen. So we praise and thank God for that answered prayer. Thank you, Sister Joanne, for uh, giving us the update. Okay, so any more? Okay, so I believe uh, that's going to be our uh, list for tonight. So let's have our time of praying for this need. Okay, let's have um, silent prayer. And after the song, we will close in a word of prayer. Thank you.
Let's close in the word of prayer. Our gracious God, Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for this uh, prayer time that you have given to us. Thank you, Lord, for um, the answered prayers, O oh Lord, that you uh, um, given, O oh Lord. And thank you, Lord, for um, hearing our prayers. And thank you also for uh, those prayer requests, O oh Lord, for tonight. I pray, O Lord, that you bless them, O oh Lord God. And help us, O oh Lord, to trust your heart, O oh Lord, in this prayer. Special Lord, we'd like to ask, O oh Lord, and extend our prayers, O oh Lord, to the family of uh, um, that needs uh, comfort, O oh Lord, at this time. Um, the Simbengo family and uh, the Sabili, Sabili family, O oh Lord, I asking for thy grace, asking for um, the goodness, O oh Lord, to their lives, O oh Lord God, and strength and comfort, O oh Lord. And we know, O oh Lord, that um, you care for us, and we know, O oh Lord, that you can give us, O oh Lord, the, the comfort that we need, O oh Lord. And thank you, Lord, for who you are in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for um, for tonight. I pray, Lord, that you continue to bless us, O oh Lord. And thank you, Lord, for our brethren here in our ch in, inside the church and also for our brethren who are tuning in in this um, prayer meeting. I pray that you continue to bless our hearts, O oh Lord. And we commit to you everything, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. So thank you, church. Thank you, folks, for your prayers. And this time, I'd like to call Pastor Sam to give us some um, announcements. Good evening po sa ating lahat. Ain't God good, folks? You know, like, uh, that's what you get from being in the South. But uh, it's great to be back here in our church. We truly miss the church, and we've been praying for uh, the services last Sunday, and praise be to God for the word of God has been preached and shared, and for the folks that were um, were here, and we're just thankful for a lot of answered prayers throughout this week, and also uh, we thank God for God's comfort uh, to all of us in times of um, trials and sufferings and and uh, testings in life. He's always there, and uh, for some quick uh, announcements as we. Our regular activists during the weekend, let's be praying for our uh, Friday home Bible studies, virtual also, that the Lord will bless, that the Lord will use our Bible study leaders, our deacons, and uh, their members to study God's Word together. Also, of course, Saturday, uh, we'll have our prayer chain ministry, as we always do uh, on the weekend. Uh, let's continue to keep that up, praying for the many needs that we have in our church, in our community, in our, in our families and members, and... Uh, globally for those prayer requests that uh, are being poured in. So we'll be able to intercede for others. It's always a privilege to pray for the needs of others. Then, of course, uh, I heard uh, we have Pastor's Appreciation Day on Sunday, and uh, thank God for the leadership of our deacons, our church officers for uh, spearheading uh, this, and um, we'll have a great time. I think we only have one service, so please be here. If you could be in person, if you can't, you're always welcome to join us virtually. And um, uh, I, I suggested this to a pastor, Abel, or whoever um, is going to do the program, if we can also have a time to, of course, honor our late uh, pastor here, Dr. Maximo Mendoza. Maybe we can um, select uh, some wonderful eulogies and comments that we receive, and we can project them and read them especially how he was uh, tremendously used by God as a pastor uh, here in our church uh, because some, some of our members had that wonderful testimony. Then also his uh, influence and being a channel blessing to missionaries and labos and friends that, that he had throughout the year. So maybe we can have that, a little portion uh, to honor um, Dr. Max and uh, 40 days by then. So <laughs> but it's always great to... Um, to see our folks here inside the church, you know, it's, it's only by the grace of God, isn't it, that we can be here. But thank you for your desire to hear God's word and also uh, to support uh, our deacons' uh, ministry in teaching and preaching God's word every Wednesday. So uh, looking forward to those and, of course, our upcoming missions conference. We have to uh, pray for the last weekend of October, pray for a wonderful theme that our missions committee is still uh, praying for. And uh, looking forward for uh, some missionaries that will be able to come and visit us in person and also some virtually 
uh, to be part of our missions conference. So um, I think that's about it. Uh, before uh, Brother Robert Miguel would come and, and share God's word tonight, we have a special music to, uh, from uh, Pastor Abel. Yeah. Galing pa ng Pilipinas, so fresh from the, the Far East, the Pearl of the Orient. And uh, it looks good. Parang hindi ka ano, nangitim sa Pilipinas. <laughs> so it's great to see him and uh, also hear him preach last Sunday after some time. So yeah, thank you. Good morning, church. Oh, good evening. <laughs> all right, um, it's good to be back, and thank you all so much for praying for me. I am back in one piece. Uh, I'm just really grateful to God for all his blessings, his provision, and also his protection. And um, tonight, I'm going to sing a Tagalog song. It's actually called Tagumpay Man o Kabiguan. Uh, this is um, a very you know, classic Filipino song. So, um, actually, also, I would just like to thank Brother um, Jaira Acampo for doing the, I mean, you know, he's a, YouTube, he's a YouTuber, he has a YouTube channel, and he's been posting, like, accompaniment videos on his channel, and I just took one of, you know, those videos, so I just really um, thank him for doing it, and actually, I asked for his permission before I use this, um, and also, if you want to subscribe to his channel, uh, I think it's called SFC Accompaniment, something like that. Um, he said the meaning of SFC is Simple Filipino Christian Accompanist. Okay, so hopefully this song will uh, bless our hearts and prepare our hearts as we listen to God's word. Kay daling magpasalamat sa Diyos Sa mga pagpapalang lagi niyang kaloob Ngunit kung may dusa at may kalungkutan Tila ba kay hirap ang siya'y pasalamatan Tila ba kay hirap magbigay ng papuri Kung mga kabiguan na daramang lagi Natitirang pag-asa'y tila ba maglalaho Sana daramang paghihirap ng puso Ngunit ang pangako niya'y huwag kang maninimdim Pagkatapos ng gabi, araw ay darating Luha sa mga matay, kaniyang papahirin Paghihirap ng puso'y kaniyang papawiin Sa lahat ng sandali, siya'y pasalamatan. Buhay man may tagumpay o may kabiguan. Pangako ng Diyos ay lagi mong panghawakan. Di niya tayo iiwan o pababayaan. Ay huwag kang maninimdim Pagkatapos ng gabi, araw ay darating Luha sa mga matay, kaniyang papahirin Paghihirap ng puso'y kaniyang papawi 
Maghihirap ng puso'y kanya Thank you, Pastor Rabel, for that uh, beautiful song. Ang sarap makinig ng mga Tagalog songs, ano? Yeah, amen. Uh, buto na lang, hindi ako nene-nervous ngayon, so I'm not gonna sing. <laughs> amen. So how are you tonight, brethren? Good. Amen. It's my privilege to uh, preach the Word of God and thank God for His uh, guidance. You know, when it's your time to preach, when it's your turn to teach Sunday school, when it's your turn to teach Friday Bible study, yung mga back-to-back na ganyan, no? But I thank God that um, he's, he guided, he's, he's guiding me. You know, usually when it comes like that, uh, you know, my uh, turn in the flesh will act up. You know, but I really thank God. Good thing the weather is not that hot, and it's... Uh, uh, it's good for my self. I mean, for my, you know, I, I, I like this weather. But anyway, so uh, please uh, pray for me as, we, as I deliver this message to you. So uh, <clears throat> when I was uh, preparing this, I asked the Lord, I said, because Lord, uh, you know, every time we prepare a message, uh, I think uh, my co deacon is the same thing, we are our preacher. We pray. To the Lord, what is what He wants us to preach to the to His people? So, um, so tonight that He um, He give us this uh, hopefully a blessing to us, how to build a strong relationship. Um, let's read our text in uh, first. I mean, in first Genesis. I'm sorry, in Genesis chapter one. Oh, wala pa yata ng Bible na first Genesis. <laughs> I'm sorry. Genesis chapter 1, verses 27 to 31. Okay? This is what the Bible says. Okay, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fall of the air, and of, of, over every living thing that movement moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of, of the tree yield, yielding seed to you it shall be for me. Okay, in verse 30, and, and every beast of the earth and every fowl of the air and everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and, and that evening and that morning were the sixth day. Okay, so, sa trabaho, when they ask us, what kind of food do you guys eat, mga Filipino? And my, I have a friend over there, he's a Filipino too. Well, medyo ano rin siya, kalog din siya. And he said that everything that moves, we eat. <laughs> you know, um, but anyway, um, <laughs> that talaga, every, every move, everything that moves, we eat. Sabi ko, ba, hindi kaya ta nagagawa yun <laughs> So, anyway, so how to build a strong relationship? All right, before we start, let's go to Lord in prayer. Our Father in heaven, Lord, uh, you know, um, we're here this evening, Lord, to study that word. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that um, you will help me, Lord, to do my best, Lord, to, um, to preach this word, Lord, that you have prepared for us. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that uh, you will put words in my mouth, 
Use me, Lord, mightily. You know that I am nothing without you. Thank you, Lord, for this ministry that you have given us, helping our, our church, our pastors, and uh, our um, leaders, Lord, and we thank you for your loving grace. Once again, we pray that uh, whatever sin that hidden in our heart, help us, Lord, to forget this, O oh Lord, and forgive us, Lord, from all our iniquities. We pray that you will fill up our empty cups, Lord, with blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Okay. So, <clears throat> you know, relationships are never easy. <laughs> diba? Kahit na mag-asawa na kayo. Relationships are never easy, but they are rewarding. There is a right way to build a healthy relationship and a wrong way. In this lesson, we can learn how you can live in the right way. That this thing is that all you need is love. All you need is love. Maybe na there is something in your mind that uh, song that came into your already. Diba? All you need is love. Diba? Okay. So sino kaya ang kumanta nun? All right. In our verse, as we read, okay, in Genesis 1, 20, chapter 1, verse 27 to 31, and in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, and the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make and help meet for him. So I was reading this uh, Genesis. Uh, they came to my mind. I mean, there's an old joke. Uh, I don't know if you can remember. What was the first sport was ever played in the Bible? First sport. Sport. Huh? Running? Running? There's a baseball, Pastor Sam's right. Bakit baseball, Pastor? In the big inning. There you go. Ah. <laughs> In the big inning. Pastor naman, eh, pinatay mo yung ano ko eh. Anyway, thank you, Pastor. Yeah, that's right. In the big inning, di ba? Every, everything that uh, there's an e what, first inning, second inning, di ba? So when God looked at his incredible creation, he realized something was missing. Adam was incredible, a work of art, gifted, intelligent, and spiritual. I think this is the man that um, most uh, young lady looking for. You know, incredible, you know, gifted, intelligent, and most of all, spiritual. Diba? Ano pa ang uh, hindihan mo dyan? So he was a lot like God as he was created in the image of God. So the Bible says that God summarizes creation in verse 31. And God saw everything that he made, as he made, and it was very good. Okay? Everything that God made is very good. So do you know who you are created in the image? Do you know you are created in the image of God? Amen. Amen. Okay. So you are amazing. You are intelligent, brethren, okay? And you are gifted. You look like your heavenly father. So, but God looked at Adam, Adam and realized, you know, he is lonely. You know, uh, it is not good that the man should be alone. He said, it, I will make him and help meet for him in Genesis 2.18. And in verse 27 of chapter 1, so God created man in his own image, in the image of God. He created he, him. In male and female, he created them. So I have the point of view that we need each other. Okay, we need each other. Kahit na ano pang galit mo sa asawa mo, sa boyfriend mo, you need each other. Okay, God wanted Adam to have a relationship. So he planned friendship, marriages, families, or business partners, whatever that will be. So he planned it all. So we can have a good relationship to them. A group of young man believers in, a, in Christ created a club called Bachelors Till the Rapture. Okay? After, <laughs> ito yung mga, mga matandang binata na siguro to na they think that they cannot get married anymore. After a lifetime of broken relationship, a young man named John joined this club with his friend. And they decided wanted only... Christians, only Jesus and friends. Well, that did not last very long. So John shared his faith with a young woman, okay? And they fell in love. Then they got married in less than a year. And the club disbanded. 
John was designed to be a relationship with the woman. Then they got married after graduation and started a new life together. So now, they had three children. After a while, choose two more in Africa. And they that now they have 12 grandkids. Life is so enriched because of relationship. Because of this relationship that, that they have, you know, um, they, uh, they, become, they become so sweet to each other. What about you? Whatever you have, whatever you have, no children or truck of load of them, whether you are single or married with kids and grandkids, you can choose a relationship. You can choose a relationship. They come in all forms, like what I said, like friendship, marriages, families, or business partner. So life is, uh, is enriched through a relationship. You can start new journey or, main, or remain isolated. It requires risk, but it's all worth it. Because you are a miracle, all you need is love. Relationships are never easy, like what I said earlier, but they are rewarding if they are done right, okay? There is right way to build healthy relationship in a wrong way. Okay, um, in our house, may rule lang asawa ko eh. Pag kayo kumain, wash your own dishes. Diba? It's, it's, it's hard, but it's rewarding. You know, when, when we do that, my wife keeps cooking, keeps cooking. You know, pag hindi mo nagawa yan, okay, patay kang bata ka. Someone once said, married doesn't make anyone happy. Is that right, married couple? Someone said, marriage doesn't make someone happy or anyone happy. It only escalates the state you are already in. There is no relationship that can make you happy. Relationship will only escalate the condition you are already in. So in other words, if you are happy, a good relationship will only make you happier. If you are miserable, it can only make you more miserable, fearful, or angry. So good relationship only multiply what you are already living. So one time, my wife and I was driving going to a Chinese restaurant <clears throat> because my children said, Mom, Dad, let's go to this uh, Chinese restaurant called the Empire Union. So while my wife, my, when I'm driving, my wife throw me a question. He said, Han, if you are a single, sabi niya, what kind of girl would you look for? He said, a sexy girl, but ugly face, or a pretty girl, but a fat face. I answered right away, none of them, none of above, just to play safe, you know? When we got to the place, and while we were waiting for, the, for our order to come, I asked my boy, Joshua, the same question my wife asked. I said, Josh, what would you pick? A sexy girl but ugly face, or pretty girl but fat face, uh, fat uh, body? And my, my son just like, you know, not, nodding. And so again, I did not satisfy that question. I asked, the daughter, that, uh, my two daughters' boyfriend, Lester and Christian, same question. And they, they're good, they, they wanna play safe. They did not answer, they just smiled at me because my two daughters are next to them. <laughs> so are you happy in your relationship with your friends, boyfriends, husband or wife, business partners? Are, are they making you happy? You know, in First Peter chapter four, first part of first, uh, of verse 8, and above all things, have fervent charity among yourself. Think of every relationship you are in, you know, or you are part of. Wow, agape is, uh, is the unconditional love we should demonstrate to everyone in our lives. The famous psychologist Carl Rogers called it a unconditional positive reward. This love can build business Families and communities is unconditional love. So do you know how to love the agape way? You have, you have ever been loved this way? Do you know that song, I know I never love this way again? Diba? Sino ba kumanta niyan? Barbara Streisand ba o Celine Dion? Okay, I know I never love this way again. 
Okay, the second part of First Peter chapter 8, before I, before I sing this, let's go on. Peter then makes a statement about the power of love. For charity shall cover the multitude of sins. So do you know what that means? It means if I love the agape way, sins will be covered. Love can covers all the mistakes in relationship. Do you remember the Beatles song, All You Need Is Love? Yeah, <laughs> All You Need Is Love, that's the Beatles song. Love is all you need. The Beatles were almost right. We also need skills, commitment, and a clean heart because relationship multiplies. So my prayer is that God will help us to, <coughs> excuse me, to love each other, you know, genuinely. It's the foundation of every healthy relationship. So you were designed to give and, and, to, and to receive this love because you are a miracle. So, so love the one you are with. Okay, so love the one that you are with. Relationship, relational health has to be based on choices, not just feelings. Don't say, I feel, I think I fell in love with this boy. I think I love this boy. You know, popular culture often glamorizes the nations of relationship. So family and love, feelings are given the highest priority at the, what they called a litmus test of any relationship. A litmus, litmus test is a uh, test for in, it's, uh, which a single factor, such an, an attitude, event, or fact. It's uh, decisive. We've all heard a statement like, if I feel good, I do it. We, feel, we fell in love, I just can't forget, or I just, don't feel do, I just don't feel like it anymore. I just don't feel like loving him or loving her anymore. You know, relationships are not built on feelings, but on choices. Right? So love is a choice. Happiness is a choice. Marriage should be a choice. Careers and education should be choices, right? So that's why when our kids are growing up, we ask them, what do you want to be when you grow up? We don't tell them what they, what, what they, want, uh, what they can become. You know, we give them a choice, right? But are your relationship based on feelings or choices? Feelings fluctuate based on thoughts and circumstances. It's a song written and sung by Stephen Hills, Love the One your will. You know, the lyrics goes like this. Well, there's rose in the foisted globe and the eagle flies with the dove. And if you can't be with the, with the one you love, honey, love the one you're with. So it sounds like so like pragmatic or uh, hard-headed. But, <laughs> but it's so true. Many people have known think that the grass on the other side is greener you know, on the other side of the other fence. They fantasize about someone's work with, you know, someone's they work with, or they dream of romantic relationship based on soap operas. Ah, ladies, you love to like Korean operas? They, they <laughs> okay, uh, sounds familiar. Every night, every night, nakakarinig ako ng Korean drama. Okay, Korean operas. All right, so... So healthy relationship starts with a, a reality, not fantasy. It really comes down to choices, to love, to care, to forgive, and to add value to someone else. If we don't value someone, you know, this, this, this can create a, a re good relationship. Relationship needs to be a nurtured and fostered. They need to bring mutual love and compassion. Even when things are tough, relationships should be win-win situation. Okay? I mean, um, I remember what uh, Pastor Max told us when, when, when me and my wife said that, Pastor, uh, we want to get married po. And Pastor asked, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure? Hindi to kanin na mainit pag napaso at iluluwa, you know. <laughs> I think he said that to everyone that he counseled, right? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, this is the love chapter, verse 4 to 7. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity invade not, invade not. Charity vouteth not itself. 
is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh not evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Okay? So, sabi nga nila, mag-asawa isa magsama sa hirap at ginhawa. So, yeah, kami dalawa ngayon mag-asawa, nagsasama kami sa hirap at ginhawa. Siya sa hirap, ako ang ginhawa. <laughs> so, this description don't sound like some silly movie. They sound like a set of choices that creates a rock on which you can build strong relationship and more. My prayer, God will help you to discover, to choose, build healthy relationship that are mutually rewarding and caring. You know, isn't it nice to see, nice to see that a couple, you know, they are very sweet, you know, they are, you know, loving and, and stuff like that. You know, <clears throat> you know this, these things are like um, a good example to, to our young people, you know. Um, so it, it is rewarding and caring. You know why? Because you are a miracle. How to improve it? How to improve it? How important is love to relationship, to relational success? Almost everything, but that would be neither true nor realistic. I've, I've seen some pretty loving people who were horrible listening. I've seen some very selfish people who loved themselves but weren't quite commitment to loving others. Wow. So the Bible tells us that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than this in Mark chapter 12, verse 31. So do you love yourself or do you show love to others? Tina Turner. Okay, who knows Tina Turner? Sabi ba, sabi, Brother Robert, and dami mong kantang nilagay dyan, ah. But yeah, yeah, I could think of a lot of songs for this. You know, Tina Turner belted out that famous tune in 1984 entitled, What's Love Got to Do With It? Okay? The chorus screams out some dece uh, deceived by her heart and her lover. So what's love got to do with it? You know, what's love but a second-hand emotion? Would you like that second-hand emotion? Of course not. In 1993, a biographical film entitled What's Love Got to Do With It? described the abuse Tina Turner experienced at the hands of her husband, tragic, but so common, Tina Turner was not talking about true love when, when, he, when she sang the song. The love described it in first, that the love described in 1 Corinthians 13. Real love is kind, gentle, and caring. Maybe only one love she knew was lust, passion, and violence. Have you ever, have you ever seen an, an experience through love? Or have you ever given it? Okay. Some of you have been in a relationship for many years. Okay. And still the same. And hopefully, we're still the same. So this classic verse keeps us a, uh, centered on the real meaning of love. Okay? We all know that in John 3, 16. Okay? The heart of the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, it reminds me of my, of my mom. Of course, every, man, every mom will do this to their children or to their uh, partner. You know, uh, my mom, she gives, she has given to us her whole life. You know, the most notable act of giving was when she took care of my very ill dad until he passed away. She gave and gave and gave, and now my mom is 84 years old. Imagine, 84 years old na yung nanay ko. And he's still alive and kicking. Amen. And he's still, he's still looking for his, uh, I don't know, pang, pang ilang... He's looking forward to see him, okay, in Virginia. Love is, love is not a second-hand emotion. It's an action. It's a an giving, and it's a, it's a sacrificial. So they say communication can either build a relationship. It's giving it a sacrificial, okay? It, it can build a relationship or destroy it, okay? It, it depends, you know, how you guys treat each other. Healthy communication is difficult and teacherous. 
even for the most committed friends and couples, because it can break down. In Proverbs 18.21, warns us about the power of our tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So our words can give death or life to a relationship. Our word can build up or tear down a relationship or marriage. You know, this is what I salute my wife. Alam ng asawa ko pag mainit ang ulo ko. And uh, he will, she, will, she will just stay away. You know, and pag tapos na ako, and, but there's sometimes na papatulan ako niyan eh. Mainitan naman ang ulo mo. You know, and something like that. But there are, uh, that's, this is what I salute to my wife. <clears throat> she, she, uh, she, she, she receives me what I am. Okay? Have you ever built other up with your words? Have you ever turned them down? Di ba mas madaling mag, mag turn down ng relationship with your word than building up? So I have said things, stupid things in anger. Have you? I've said stupid things because of fear. Should I go on? I, ha I, I can tell a lot of things. But the Bible says to confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much in James 5, 16. So there's a poem that goes like this. Speak life into your separation, trials and tribulation. Open up your mouth and let the healer take over. When you're feeling unstable, Jesus is able. So open up your mouth and let the healer take over. If we are really, really honest or totally honest and transparent, we've all said stupid things, or we call it not nice things, insensitive things, things that have hurt people and grieved the spirit. You know, how do you feel when you hurt somebody? You know, do you enjoy it? Do you enjoy uh, seeing that people getting hurting? You know, in James 3, 9 says, Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the uh, similitude of God. So we can learn a few sentences that helps us communicate better in a tough times. We can say, we can say help me to understand. I did, I did not get it. We can say, in other words, I hear you say that. And perhaps that most important, please forgive me. I didn't mean to hurt you. The Bible says a gentle answer turns away wrath. Thank God for that. I pray that God will help us through the Holy Spirit to speak words like, you know, I love you. Okay, most of our couples here, before they go to sleep, they say, I love you. Okay, with a kiss. All right, when they do something, I appreciate you. I think you are incredible with a wink in the eye like that. Also, good are, I'm sorry, and how can I help you? Communication can be difficult. But it all starts with one simple ingredient, a heart that's clean and filled with love. You'll succeed because you are a miracle. Are you adding value to your relationship? So every people in this world has needs, whether they are millionaires, billionaires, professors, doctors, pastors, deacons, Political people, politicians, they all have needs, okay? The rest of the world also has needs. Even normal people like us, maybe you are retired police officer, nurse, secretary, store clerk, or maybe you run, you run your own businesses. It doesn't matter. You, doesn't matter who you are. We all have needs. Do you have needs? So what are they? Give it to the Lord. Sometimes we felt like we didn't measure up. Diba? Even though we do our best. Sometimes we feel like, I think I'm not doing my best. You know, I'm not measuring up. I'm not growing up. Because of our focus was generally on ours, on ourselves. What they say, for me, myself, and I. <laughs> Until God touched us. Until God 
healed us and reconciled us to his love. So don't you think these people around us, you know, what they tell about you. You know, um, uh, you, you should be grateful. You know, you should be thankful to the people around you, like our pastor especially, you know. When you, when you have problems, you know, you call your pastors, right? You talk to your parents. You talk to the leaders of the church and your family. Your family had a huge impact in your life. You should be grateful to God that you should experience all this amazing care, this special um, attention. You know, uh, young people, you might have a lot of friends, yes? You turn to them when you're on your problems, but really the only, only person that can, can help you there is no other, no other than the Lord. Of course, the Lord will use your family to, to help you, to protect you. So we have to show, our, to show our love to God by reading his word, praying, memorize the word, seek the counsel of godly and, faithful, faithfully, at, and faithfully attend church. There are no accidents in the Lord's. That's why we are here right now. Jesus said, come unto me. Okay, come unto me. That labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. So, <clears throat> so you can come, you can become healthy too, you know. Once you are healthy, you can build a healthy relationship, of course. Go out and get what you need. Don't wait for your ship to come in. Swim out and grab it. Okay, your new focus is personal health. All right? Once you are healthier, you will be able to walk into, your, into a room, a business or a family gathering and add value. So everyone needs what you have. They need healing. They need uh, a, a good self-esteem. The Bible says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Okay, in Ephesians 4.29. So my, my prayer is that you will add value to the three person a day this week. Add value just to the three person a day this week. You can imagine 21 people encouraged, affirmed that inspired you by your word and action. You will no longer be looking for others to fill your tank and meet your needs. Your tank has been filled and, and the spirit of God had a lot of uh, hard work. Now you will fill their tank. So, wow, you are different, maker, and you are a miracle. Conflict in a relationship happens all the time, right? That happens all the time, almost every day. One of the biggest culprits is our tendency to misinterpret. Misinterpret. Sometimes, na, you know, na, pag na misinterpret ka ng kasama mo, ano, what did you say? Did you say something this and that? Has anyone ever mis uh, misinterpreted you? Diba? Yes, of course. You were speaking the truth in love. You were doing your best to communicate clearly with love and compassion. But the other person is still got so defensive. So what to do? Of course, you have to talk to them with love. Okay? Say sorry, apologize. So Jesus would often prefer a message with who had ears to hear, let him hear. Okay? He knew, every ha he knew everyone had the physical ears. Okay? May mga bingi dyan, Okay? But they were still emotionally and spiritually deaf. Okay? And we all have the tendency to misinterpret because we all interpret through our vessel. You know, nakakatawa pag uh, kaming magkakapatid nag uh, um, kita sa messenger ba? Yung bunso namin, saka yung panganay, parehong bingi. <laughs> Sabi niya sa tayo nga, anong sinabi mo kuya? Anong sinabi mo ate? <laughs> Something like that. Tayo, pinag, uh, pinagtatawa na namin sila one time. Yung, yung panganay at bunso, may uh, bingi. So, <laughs> so we, don't, we don't live with the facts of our lives. We live with an interpretation of the facts of our lives. So when someone speaks to you, okay, it is automatically unconsciously interpreted, okay? If your heart is bitter and damaged, no one will ever be able to get through until you spend 
sometimes with the healing presence of Jesus and a good therapist. So the vessel is full of dirty filter that cause you to misinterpret. So do you have any dirty filters? Would you like to see them cleaned? Okay. Would you like to build healthy, strong relationship? I'm sure you do. Your answer is yes. Yes. So will you take a moment and ask the Holy Spirit to help you inter interpret any hurtful word of situation? God will not change your past, but he will help you to, um, he will help you to, uh, to reinterpret it. You'll be amazed as the result in your relationship. You know why? Because you are a miracle. In my conclusion, having said that, building a strong relationship with a friendship, marriage, families, and business partners, we should have a desire to build a relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, the power of human desire can be amazing. Desire and passion can drive to do great things, even heroic things. But at the same time, if our desire are not aligned in the will of God, then they can lead us into a, to our downfall. You know, the wrong desire can live a life full of sin. So as a believers, it's our duty to monitor our life, our friendship to the Lord, and to make sure whatever it is that we desire Whatever it is what we're passionate about, it should never compromise our relationship to our sa with our Savior. In Psalms 37, verse 4 and 5, I don't, I don't think I put it there, Pastor Bell. Delight, thy world, the, the, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desire of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it, pass, bring it to pass. So, now... Uh, this verse often misinterpreted, you know, this uh, Psalms 37, 4 and 5, misinterpreted to mean that God will give us whatever we ask. But what this verse actually means is that when we love God, our desire will change to become like his. Okay, so I hope and pray that this simple lesson, I will have mga points, okay, this simple Bible study lesson that it will help us to build a strong or happy relationship to our partners, to our friends, and, uh, and uh, partners, whoever they may be. Okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and let's uh, give God the glory and all, and all these things. Lord Jesus, there are many things in our life that we may consider important. There are many things that we devote our times and energy into thinking that they will bring us happiness, but all of them are worthless when compared to you. There is nothing on this earth that's worth having, Lord, that you're not involved, that you are involved, Lord. Your word in Psalms 73, 25, whom I have, whom have I heaven but thee, and there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. Lord God, Father in heaven, in every desire that we have is insignificant in line of eternity. Help us, Lord, to have a desire to store up riches in heaven and not on this earth. And all is in this world are meaningless. So, Lord, help us to fix our eyes on you. Help us to fix our attitude on you. Lord, help us, to, uh, help us Lord, to have a passion to our fellow uh, believers and to, our, uh, and to the people around us. Lord, teach us to love what you love and teach us to value what you value. Lord, transform our mind, Lord, into the things of this world. Realign our view in this world so that matches, matches you, our Lord. Lord Jesus, may the beauty of the gospel, beauty is in our, heart, in our heart and move us into action. Remind us of, Lord, to continue, Lord, to praise you and to glorify you. And we pray, Father, Lord, that whatever we do, Lord, in serving you, whatever is, Lord, may, may your name be glorified in our life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Thank you, brethren, for your time listening, and hopefully that we've learned something tonight. Pastor Sam.
Amen. Thank you, Brother Robert, for uh, sharing uh, the message tonight, reminding us how to build a strong relationship with having a strong, right foundation, isn't it? And we can find that from the Word of God. So um, I hope and pray we'll have a great rest of uh, the week. So thank you for tuning in, and everybody take care, and we'll see you next time.